Pharisee did not come to the temple to pray, he came to boast. He came to thank God that he was not like the rest of men. Um, and, and the Pharisee is quite good. He, he doesn't lust after women. He fasts. He's prayerful. He, he's generous. He, he gives 10% of his income. And, and he says the gross income, not, not the net income. But unfortunately, the devil will allow any vice if we maintain the ugliest one, pride. Um, he, the, the devil will allow us to conquer any vice if, if we maintain that ugliest one, which is pride. He won't bother us with impure thoughts, laziness, gluttony, as long as he can keep us thinking how much better we are than the rest of men. If he can maintain us in, his, in our pride, uh, it, it doesn't matter what else he lets us do. Like St. Augustine says, every other kind of iniquity prompts the doing of evil deeds, but pride lurks even in the doing of good deeds to their undoing. Like, pride undoes good actions. Um, like, like we said, other sins tempt us to do evil, but pride tempts us to do good but for the wrong motive. Okay? There's a book on pride called Thief of the Holocaust. Okay? The, the greatest sacrifice we could make would be without value if our motive is not love of God, but rather love of self. And that's, that's the problem with the Pharisees. Um, like we say, um, that every other kind of iniquity prompts the doing of evil deeds, pride lurks, in the doing of good deeds to their undoing, says St. Augustine. Um, <clears throat> like we say that the Pharisee um, gives a litany of his virtues, and he prays with head unbowed. That's kind of the tip-off. This, this translation says that he prays to himself. Okay? With head unbowed um, is not the way we pray. Head bowed recognizes the, that it's to God, to this awesome God that we pray. Otherwise, we're praying to ourselves. It's like we say, he's in the right church, but he's praying to the wrong God. That, that, that's the problem with the Pharisee. Um, so pride blinds us spiritually. One priest, Father Bloom, says that when we're blinded spiritually, we are unable to see ourselves in the light of God's truth. Um, it, it takes grace to see ourselves as God sees us. But the Pharisees are blind. They cannot examine their own conscience. So they examine their neighbor's conscience. Okay? And, and he looks at the, Pharisee, at the publican and, and just can thank God that he's not like these uh, judgments he makes about the, the publican. Okay. Again, right church, wrong God, the God of self-love, the God of one's own pride. It's a self-centered monologue. It's trusting in oneself and despising others. Humility is confidence in God. Pride is confidence in self. So it's a dysfunctional prayer. He's encased in the prison of his own self-regard. It's, it's, dis, it's dysfunctional because he prays to himself. He can't break out of the web of his own egotism. Um, it's an exercise in self-congratulations. Okay. Um, and actually, that, that virtue of humility is the one thing that distinguishes Christianity from pagan religions. They say, Aristotle, Aristotle thought pride was one of the virtues, but Christianity says it's the greatest of all vices. Nothing distinguishes Christian morality from pagan morality more sharply than those opposing attitudes toward pride. Even, even this whole uh, self-esteem movement uh, tends to, uh, uh, to, to, to raise that, that head of pride in us, to, to increase that, that, that pride in us, to become self-absorbed, to see the world through the lens of our own self-egotism. Um, I remember one mother saying that her daughter prayed, thank you God for me, I love me, amen.
Okay, and that's the prayer of the Pharisee. He prays to himself. Um, but humility enables us to transcend ourselves, to get out from that web uh, of our own egotism, uh, to transcend. And that's the grace uh, of humility. To be humble is to know ourselves. As St. Augustine says, great is the kingdom to which we aspire, but humble is the way that leads to it. As that gospel concludes, um, those who humble themselves shall be exalted, and those who exalt themselves shall be humbled. Okay? Um, so maybe one practical note is that we, we can make an examination of conscience every day. And part of our examination of conscience should be to thank God for the graces he gives us during that day, for the grace not to fall into sin, the grace to practice virtue. But we make that thanksgiving not with head unbowed, not attributing it to ourselves, but to God. If we make that thanksgiving with head bowed, um, then, then it, it's a fruitful thanksgiving, as well as accusing us of our faults, uh, you know, our, asking the Holy Spirit to accuse us of our faults during that day. Okay? So, so to make that examination of conscience, uh, to, to see myself in the light of God's truth, to pray for that grace, um, and to thank God for the virtues he allows me to practice, he sustains in me, and also to ask God to help me to overcome those areas of weakness, uh, of sin. Um, so we, um, we, we pray that, that God will strengthen the, the publican in me, that, that humility that enables me to transcend myself and, and allows my prayers to reach God.